So we will continue with liver cirrhosis um, with its longer than usual definition. So we define cirrhosis as a chronic disease of liver and which is characterized by several uh, important pathogenetical and morphological aspects namely decrease in number of functionally normal hepatocytes. At the same time, the remaining space is occupied by diffuse overgrowth of connective tissue. This all should be accompanied by decrease in overall diameter of the sinusoids. As well as, since uh, liver is very uh, good at regeneration, after the damage we have accompanying regeneration of parenchyme but it is pathological regeneration with formation of pseudonodules and uh, it is seen not only at a gross picture of these many nodules but also uh, inside the liver also microscopically and that results in reconstruction of parenchyme and vasculature definition given by PubMed is uh, also uh, within the same context it shows that it is a liver disease in which the normal microcirculation the gross vascular anatomy and hepatic architecture have been variably destroyed and altered with fibrosepta or surrounding regenerated or regenerating parenchymal nodules so it is complex problem but after both definitions, I would like us to keep in mind that it is not just a damage to the hepatocytes, but very important role we have of impaired blood flow within the liver. Probably you recognize this intelligent person who decided to uh, steal the fire from the gods. That's why he was uh, chained not so far from us it is Caucasus according to the legends and uh, you probably know what this nice bird vulture is going to do now it is again afternoon and uh, vulture is going to eat some portion of the Prometheus liver and uh, I am not sure is it because of better understanding of liver function by that ancient times where uh, intuitively this vulture was aware that uh, the liver is very good at regeneration especially if it is not a usual man's liver but uh, liver of semi-god as Prometheus was considered so every day his liver regenerated enough so that he had enough uh, dinner every day I think that if the vulture would have chosen another organ he would not have enough uh, food similarly we should consider that this uh, damage in our days is not so much due to vultures but due to another vulture of our days that has alcohol which is uh, causing different types of cirrhosis could be portal or fatty type and the mechanism is that it directly with its as well as with its degradation products causing damage on hepatocyte as well as activates copper cells to be responsible for future uh, fibrotic changes that we will be describing soon biliary cirrhosis is due to impaired bile flow which has two types one is primary biliary cirrhosis which is uh, autoimmune and we might have secondary biliary cirrhosis which developed uh, which develops in case of obstruction in the biliary pathways uh, another probably most common type of cirrhosis is uh, due to uh, viral hepatitis especially uh, hepatitis B and C viruses commonly might lead to cirrhosis A for example uh, very uncommon in this aspect other toxins chemicals as well as autoimmune destruction this is the group of so-called post-necrotic <coughs> cirrhosis 
as well as we have maybe less common but not less interesting uh, types of cirrhosis with related with glycogen storage diseases with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency with hemochromatosis due to accumulation of uh, iron in the body or within the same group we would have Wilson's disease etc. So now it is very important to again recall what was the structure of the pseudozoids and how uh, important uh, intracellular crosstalk we have. So these are hepatocytes that you see here with very tight junctions in between of them and bile capillaries in between of them. Then there is space of DCA which is lying between hepatocyte and the sinusoid. And note also here we have microvilli, so hepatocytes are quite aware where they uh, have the uh, cytosoid, of course. And uh, here is copper cell, uh, endothelial cells, but the most important negatively maybe hero of this space is the stellate cell or uh, ito cell that we described in the previous portions of this lecture. And as you will remember, it is usually considered when it is quiescent uh, as a cell which is able to store uh, lipids with vitamin A inside. Uh, so what happens in case of liver injury? Now, different factors may be responsible for this dramatic change in the phenotype of this quietened stellate cell. Uh, now it became so-called myofibroblast-like cell or myofibroblast with the uh, ability to produce lots of uh, extracellular matrix and uh, the copper cells probably are along with uh, endothelial cell are those most important cells which turn this uh, quiescent stellate cell into such fashion. Uh, the next slide continues same idea with better uh, illustration of most important factors contributing to this kind of change. Here we can see that it is very tiny uh, extracellular matrix here normally delicate as even they mention but uh, activated stellate cell become myofibroblast with new features, proliferation, here we see mitotic figures, contraction, contractile ability, chemotaxis ability to move along this uh, DCA space and fibrogenesis of course. Uh, most important cytokines that are promoting this are shown also here for proliferation, it is platelet-derived growth factor as well as tumor necrosis factor. For contractile function, endothelin-1 is shown, for instance, but it is not only it. It, is also, uh, the, so it includes also some others, about which we'll talk a little later, uh, including, for example, from boxane A2, etc. Chemotactic ability, uh, monocyte chemotactic protein 1, etc. And fibrogenesis, key cytokine for this is TGF-beta. Uh, this process uh, of extensive extracellular matrix uh, production is accompanied at the same time we may continue here the smaller picture not only matrix synthesis is uh, increased but also its degradation is impaired because of down regulation of matrix metalloproteinases uh, but at the same time the hepatic stellate cell may stimulate hepatocytes not only their uh, apoptosis but also their uh, regeneration and this simultaneous increase in both uh, apoptosis and uh, regeneration results in a loss of overall number of hepatocytes but at the same time formation of the uh, above mentioned nodules as well as may predispose to uh, liver cancer to hepatocellular carcinoma. Also this cell is uh, participating in inflammatory uh, changes within the liver resulting in uh, increased uh, formation of corresponding mediators 
which especially if we consider the uh, gut liver access with increased endotoxin formation results in additional uh, stimuli for constant inflammatory uh, microenvironment, which could be one of other reasons contributing to cancer. Uh, very important, another issue is that angiogenesis is also stimulated and this angiogenesis is not limited only to liver but also to the uh, new vessels which will try to compensate the blood flow disturbances due to uh, portal hypertension about which we'll talk a little later. And we see lots of factors contributing to uh, accumulation, proliferation, and survival of these fibrogenic cells. So, this is general characteristics of cirrhosis, and uh, one of most common complications of cirrhosis is ascites. So, what is its pathogenesis? Most important factor here is, of course, portal hypertension which results in increased capillary filtration pressure being the most important factor and this results in increased intestinal fluid leakage and accumulation in abdominal cavity that is ascites. But at the same time several other factors may contribute. Most important of them is that we have decreased uh, albumin production because of hepatocyte failure which results in decreased colloid osmotic or known as oncotic pressure, which additionally will contribute to this stalling forces and ascites formation. Um, this decreased uh, effective plasma volume uh, is responsible for not only uh, hypotension, but also it results in activation of renin angiotens in aldosterone system, which results in sodium and water retention and it further contributes to ascites. If we remember that aldosterone metabolism is impaired, this may result in some additional aldosterone formation. Um, as a complication, not always, but as a complication we might have also bacterial peritonitis and it may result in increased capillary permeability. But we should mention that this is not common uh, and not constant uh, component of ascitic process in liver cirrhosis. Some additional amount of fluid we might have here because of increased lymph production. And uh, when it is uh, observed endoscopically, some endoscopists decided to call this crying liver because of that picture of uh, lymph droplets flowing down from the liver into the peritoneal cavity. And now a uh, very important, uh, both easy and important in terms of distinguishing feature, uh, serum ositis albumin gradient. This is very important uh, index uh, which is easy to measure if we measure to uh, albumin concentrations, albumin in serum and albumin in acidic fluid. Uh, just one important consideration here is that uh, we should uh, measure them at the same day, better if simultaneously, in order to have more uh, representative data. So what is the idea of measuring this serum ositis albumin gradient? Uh, if this gradient is high it will. Uh, it, it it means that the main driving force for ascites formation is increasing stalling forces, increasing hydrostatic pressure. So we can consider that if it is it is more than 1.5, 1.1 gram per deciliter, uh, then ascites is due to portal hypertension. While if it is less than 1.1. Uh, it is more likely that the mechanism for ascites formation is increased in permeability, which could be uh, in nephrotic syndrome or pancreatitis, biliary leak, etc. So that that's why uh, we should not just limit our understanding of ascites fluid 
only by measuring albumins there, as we were saying in previous term while, dis while describing uh, exudates and trying to differentiate transudate from exudate. Here we should keep attention to uh, focus our attention on difference between uh, albumin in serum and in acetic fluid. Uh, by the way, congestive heart failure also will uh, or may contribute to portal hypertension, but interestingly in this case this gradient is even more than 2.5. So, uh, let us try to characterize portal hypertension in a little more details. Um, some our older uh, approaches were just to measure uh, pressure in portal system. But again, to be much more accurate, it is better to measure not just pressure there, but the difference between pressures in portal vein and the inferior vena cava. So that this uh, parameter is called uh, portal pressure gradient, which is uh, key in defining uh, portal hypertension today. If we have more than 10 millimeters mercury, then we have a uh, clinical significant portal hypertension. Normally it should be up to 5 millimeters. 6 to 9 are subclinical. So why the, this uh, pressure gradient is important? Because overall the pressure here in the portal system is based on this equation Q uh, times R. Q is the blood flow rate and R is resistance, um, hepatic vascular resistance. So normally when the blood flow rate is constant, resistance is the main uh, factor that will uh, define what kind of pressure we'll have in the system. But uh, interestingly, in portal hypertension and in liver cirrhosis, uh, initially we have increased resistance, which in turn results in portal hypertension. But then um, we have splunking phase of dilation in order to compensate for decreasing effective circulating volume of plasma, which in turn results in uh, increased cardiac output, which in turn might may increase actually the uh, portal venous blood inflow, so that finally in uh, portal in uh, portal hypertension, the increase in pressure actually is not only due to uh, increasing resistance by several mechanisms, but also due to increased uh, cardiac output and increased blood flow. Uh, to better understand the formation of portal hypertension, let us have a look at uh, the liver and the splunknic circulation. Very interesting and uh, directed to opposite uh, side re uh, reaction of vessels we have in cirrhosis. Uh, what I mean is that we have increased vascular resistance, hepatic, not only due to architectural disturbances, I mean fibrosis, nodule formation, vascular remodeling, etc., but also there is increased hepatic vascular tone. According to some authors, this second uh, mechanism, increased uh, vascular tone, contributes to 20, 30 and even more percent of overall increase in resistance. I consider this very important since this component allows us to um, try to decrease this resistance in order to decrease hypertension. Otherwise, if it was only due to uh, fibrosis and vascular remodeling, the only thing that we could do is liver transplantation. While still there are lots of uh, possibilities for pharmacological interventions. What are the reasons for these changes in uh, functional uh, increase in vascular tone? 
uh, factors include reduced nitric oxide bioavailability. Probably we remember such expression we, when we were talking about uh, hypertensive uh, vascular disease or even atherosclerosis. We mentioned then there is endothelial dysfunction in which there is increased production of nitric oxide and therefore decreased nitric oxide bioavailability. There is impaired response to vasodilators as well as vice versa, increased response to various vasoconstrictors, most, most important of which here in the liver are thromboxane A2, norepinephrine, endothelin 1, angiotensin 2, cystinyl, leukotriens, etc. Uh, the main culprits here are uh, hepatic stellate cell activation, sinusoidal endothelial cell dysfunction, and it is again type of endothelial dysfunction, as well as copper cell activation. Interestingly, and maybe somewhat unexpectedly, we have also uh, vasodilation in the splunknic blood circulation. There is increased production of uh, vasodilators, not finally explained why this, uh, this happens. Some try to consider this as compensation for this vasoconstriction. Anyway, nitric oxide here, prostacycline, endocannabinoids, glucagon are all contributing to vasodilation here in the system, as well as impaired response to vasoconstrictors. And third factor, very important again, is angiogenesis which also, as we'll see later, will contribute to formation of varices. So this results in further impairments in systemic blood circulation, namely increased cardiac output, uh, which then may increase portal collateral blood flow, which will again contribute to portal hypertension, as we mentioned a couple of slides ago, as well as uh, splenic arterial vasodilation, a further decrease effective blood volume circulation and contributes to hypotension, which in turn activates uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, resulting in more sodium and water retention uh, and contributing to increased cardiac output. So, if we look closer to the uh, liver, we'll see that uh, here we have one more interesting interaction. It is not only copper cell and stellate cell talk, but also intercellular crosstalk between sinusoidal endothelial cell and hepatic stellate cell. Actually, it appears that lots of vasoconstrictor stipuli are all converging on hepatic stellate cell, and it becomes very important uh, contributor to uh, hepatic vascular resistance. Uh, to mention a few, norepinephrine, thromboxane A2, uh, urotensin 2, cystenyl, leukotriens, uh, endothelin 1 through its various receptors, vasopressin, angiotensin 2, all of them are resulting in uh, much more uh, constriction. Again, within the intracellular mechanisms, we have raw kinase activation with uh, eventually much more uh, phosphorylation of myosin light chains. So, hepatic stellate cell actually in this aspect behaves itself as a smooth muscle cell, which as we mentioned before is lacking in sinusoids. And also at the right side we see the possible reasons why we have uh, nitric oxide bioavailability decrease. Again, it is oxidant stress here from one side and a few other factors contributing from the other. Uh, <coughs> so the result of all this intercellular crosstalk, impede crosstalk between copper cell, sinusoidal endothelial cell, and hepatic stellate cell or ETO cell is resulting in increased vasoconstriction and decreased vasodilation. Uh, since, the, the, in terms of mortality, one of the most important uh, contributing mechanisms is uh, varices formation, uh, which probably uh, we should uh, remi uh, uh, re remember that are formed at the site of uh, anastomosis between portal system and uh, caval system, especially one of them located at the lower portion of the iso 
uh, esophagus due to increased shunting blood flow here and constant difference in pressures, high pressure in portal system and lower at the uh, cable system. This results in increased uh, shunting of blood. Also, uh, we have very important contribution of local factors which increase locally uh, vasodilation as well as promote formation of angiogenic factors uh, like vascular endothelial growth factor which results in formation of more vessels as well as there is dilation of pre-existing vessels. These two factors together results in forma result in formation of varices which then uh, driving, uh, being drived by the same factors VEGF and vasodilation and constant shunting of blood results in variceal growth which one day are ruptured. Most of the focus of treating portal hypertension and cirrhosis is directed to uh, prevention of this periceal rupture. That's why probably revealing of these mechanisms might help to prevent or treat varices formation. Um, if we now shift back to macro level out of the intracellular, we should consider that there are three levels where we may have a problem in hepatic blood circulation. Therefore, we classify portal hypertension based on the site of increased resistance. So that correspondingly, we might have prehepatic causes like uh, splenic or mesenteric vein thrombosis. Uh, we might have even congenital stenosis of portal vein, etc. Uh, most common, of course, intrahepatic cause of increased resistance. Uh, the leading cause being liver cirrhosis and uh, second cause could be schistosomiasis but uh, this data vary from based on geographical area schistosomiasis being even the leading cause of um, uh, portal hypertension in Africa for example and third we might have also post-hepatic portal hypertension because we shouldn't forget that uh, from the liver there are some three or four usually hepatic veins that then have very short uh, distance traveling t till the heart and if there are some thrombi for example formation here uh, as we have in Pat Chiari syndrome we'll again have uh, increased uh, resistance to blood flow and eventually portal hypertension here we can see picture of ascites how a large accumulation of fluid we might have uh, there and all this is because of those formation of vicious circles which constantly promote more and more and more fluid and sodium retention and all this accumulates in uh, peritoneal cavity while leaving effectively uh, circulating volume of blood low which triggers again uh, new sodium and water retention and again we have ascites. Usually ascites is considered as more or less compensative if it, if it is responding well to diuretics but at some stage even this might be not enough. Um, another signs of mm, uh, cirrhosis not only uh, ascites Caravaggio is now reminding us this is one of his uh, most famous pictures called Medusa. You remember that uh, this interesting creature uh, fortunately or unfortunately were had snakes instead of hair. So similar structure we might see at the uh, abdomen of patient with portal hypertension. Here we see these convoluted uh, veins which are also a uh, result of increased blood flow through this bypass. Uh, and one more thing requires uh, additional explanation. Uh, some of you might think that if we have activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, if we have even insufficient sometimes 
inactivation and metabolism of aldosterone in the liver if it is affected we should expect hypernatremia but actually it is not true uh, because we have another uh, concurrent compensatory mechanism uh, that is in case of uh, splanking vasodilation and uh, which as we mentioned is due to release of different vasodilators considered nitric oxide was one of the most important there this hypotension and systemic hypotension is uh, an, an another reason for production of ADH so we have two uh, problems why is one is that we have uh, aldosterone production and this leads to increased sodium reabsorption and from the other hand correspondingly to this sodium we have ADH production osmotic production but since we have additional ADH release due to hypotension due to non-osmotic triggers ADH overall uh, becomes more important so that in more or less compensated state we would have uh, we wouldn't have uh, neither hypo nor uh, hyponatremia but uh, in less compensated states and in more progression of the disease finally ADH prevails and we have uh, hypervolemic dilutional hyponatremia this is very important since this hyponatremia is one of the predictors of uh, hepatic encephalopathy and coma as well as since we had problems as you remember in astrocyte uh, in terms of its uh, osmotic pressure etc this hyponatremia may additionally compromise the uh, intracellular osmotic balance within the cells so that it is not just a bystander of the problem but also important pathogenic uh, mechanism as well as indicator of possible problem so this picture allows us to generalize what are the main uh, signs and symptoms of liver cirrhosis we started from hepatic encephalopathy we mentioned esophageal varices formation um, overall the impairment in liver may promote a breakdown of skeletal muscles resulting in malnutrition um, we also mention about ascites formation due to portal hypertension splenomegaly usually accompanies uh, portal hypertension because of impaired blood outflow from the spleen caput meduse was also mentioned uh, hemorrhoids caput meduse and esophageal varices being three uh, indicators of portal of hypertension and activation of the shunts uh, and interestingly we have also sold called skin spider angiomata we might have sometimes uh, gynecomasty not showed in this patient and we might have testicular atrophy being probably result of endocrine uh, disorders which are explained as following since in uh, uh, male patients adrenal glands are uh, producing also some small amounts of uh, estrogen hormones which by normal liver would be constantly and effectively cleared and metabolized in cirrhotic patients the amount of these estrogens uh, is increased which results further in um, by negative feedback by in uh, decreased production of follicle stimulating hormone which in turn results in less stimulation of uh, testicles of this person so that there is again misunderstanding between the uh, different endocrine uh, organs namely again adrenal gland in uh, producing estrogens insufficient clearance so that uh, the anterior pituitary is not aware uh, that these estrogens are produced by adrenal glands and unfortunately they suppress the testosterone production by the 
uh, testicles, which results in also decreased libido and other problems. So we came to a conclusion today. Um, why we focus on some uh, intercellular crosstalks? Why all this was involved in the lecture? I think the answer is that because this information about new mechanisms allows us uh, to think about new drugs that might help in uh, treating these kind of patients, especially if we were talking about uh, arch architectural distortion, this probably when is diagnosed is uh, more or less irreversible. But we also today realized that there is uh, also important uh, functional component within this increased vascular resistance and there is intrahepatic vasoconstriction which could be treated. One of the drugs that is addressing this issue is simvastatin and uh, this is one another uh, probably challenge for pathophysiologists to try to explain how it works because it is not only by of course not only but and not probably due to uh, inhibition of endogenous cholesterol synthesis but also due to the other features of this uh, interesting class of drugs so those others that are uh, used now are carvedilol which is uh, non-selective uh, beta blocker which is useful in both uh, decreasing vasodilation splenic vasodilation as well as it may uh, slightly uh, promote vasodilation in the in intrahepatically interesting new class of drugs <coughs> TLR4 antagonists may also help to decrease uh, remodeling of the cytosoids may decrease uh, those uh, may decrease the signaling within the um, hepatic stellate cell and uh, sinusoid in the liver. There are drugs may uh, that target uh, angiogenesis, so they are anti-angiogenesis agents. Of course, the, if they are administered and the, if they applied systemically, they might have lots of. Um, side effects which could be not so beneficial. So that's why I think we have pathophysiology. And when we are talking in this uh, manner about different organs and cells, I remember words of this politician. I hope you will uh, of course know who he is. From this even young face we may see features uh, of future uh, one of the most brilliant politicians despite the fact that uh, I do not feel so much sympathy to this politician he's of course well talented one so what he says is that politician is to needs the ability to foretell what is going to happen tomorrow next week next month and next year and to have the ability afterwards to explain why it didn't happen uh, Hopefully you know this is Winston Churchill that mentioned this. Well, pathophysiologists, well, uh, I do not, of course, attribute these words to Rudolf Virchow, who is in the picture, but we might consider that pathophysiologist needs the ability to foretell what drug should be helpful in treating diseases. Uh, and then when we will see that con corresponding randomized controlled trials fail to show effect, Pathophysiologist should explain why it doesn't work, and we need new, uh, probably challenges and new drugs to develop to uh, treat this or that disorder. Uh, I think here we will uh, only briefly go through these slides because I think that the remaining part about jaundice is quite normally explained in. Uh, Robin's textbook so that I don't want to provide any new details unless you have any questions we'll be happy to discuss with you these slides and uh, to thank you and not just to say thank you for your attention along these three uh, parts of these lectures I want to stress also for myself so that I had lots of tries to uh, make these lectures available. There, there were 
lots of failures, failures until now. I hope that I would be able to upload finally this portion of video there. As well as it's interesting that it is uh, different types of failure, heart failure, respiratory failure, uh, liver failure, but still we need uh, an uh, enthusiasm in order to have finally success. So thank you once again and hope this was helpful. If any questions we would be extremely happy to explain.